All right, so 1.6 part three. So we're still solving equations. Today we're gonna focus on solving equations with radicals. So the first goal is to isolate the radical. We wanna get the square root all by itself. So what do I need to do to isolate my radical here? Subtract one, move it to the other side. So I have two x minus one is equal to the negative square root of two minus x. What should I do next? Divide by negative one. So we need to get our radical all by itself. It still had a negative in front of it, so I'm gonna divide by a negative one to cancel it out. And we just flip the signs on the left. So negative two x plus one is equal to the square root of two minus x. Now what's the opposite of the square root? How do I get that to go away? Square both sides. So I'm gonna square the left side and square the right side. So on the right side, the square root and the squared cancel. So we're just left with two minus x, everything on the inside. On the left side, what do I do when I have negative two x plus one squared? How do I square the left side? I have to FOIL, because there's two of them, so I'm gonna write it twice and FOIL it out. So it's negative two x plus one times negative two x plus one. So let's FOIL. What's negative two x times negative two x? Four x squared. Negative 2x times 1 would be negative 2x. 1 times negative 2x would be negative 2x. And 1 times 1 is 1. Let's combine our like terms. So we get 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 is equal to 2x, 2 minus x. What would we do next? So I'm going to move everything to one side because I see that I have an x squared and an x. So that tells me that I'm going to have to factor. So I need to move everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract 2, combine that with its like term, and add x. So we have 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now we know we have to factor. How would I factor here? Uh, multiply, the <coughs> multiply the first times the last. So we get negative 4. What are two factors of negative 4 that add to negative 3? Negative 4 and 1. So this factors into x minus 4 and x plus 1. George, what do I have to do next? Before I do that, I have to divide by four. Since I started with multiplying, don't forget to divide. So our factors here are x minus one and four x plus one. Now what do I do? Set them both equal to zero. So we get x minus 1 equals 0 and 4x plus 1 equals 0. So x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 1 over 4. Now with our square root equations, we always have to check our answers. And it's not as simple as just plugging it in and make sure we don't get zero in our denominator. We have to check it all the way to make sure that the equation makes sense. So let's start with plugging in one. So I'm gonna go back to my original equation and plug one in. So we're checking when x equals one. So we have two times one is equal to one minus the square root of two minus one. So that would be 2 equals 1 minus, what's the square root of 1? One? 1. 
So 1 minus 1 would be 0. Does 2 equal 0? Does that make sense? No. So 1 is not one of our solutions. It doesn't work. Next, let's check negative one-fourth. So we have two times negative one over four is equal to one minus the square root of two minus negative one over four. So over here, we get negative two over four, which simplifies to negative one-half on the left side. On the right side, this turns into a plus. I'm adding fractions, so I need a common denominator, so I can change this to be 8 over 4. So when I add it together, I get 9 over 4. So we can take the square root of 9 and the square root of 4. So this would be 1 minus, what's the square root of 9? 3. And what's the square root of 4? 2. Let's give one a common denominator, so we'll make it two over two. What's two minus three? Negative one over two. So does negative one fourth work as an answer? Yes. So our only answer here is negative one fourth. You have to check your work, plug it in to make sure that it makes sense. Let's look at number one. All right, number one, we want to isolate our radical. So we have to move everything else to the other side. What would we move first? 16, let's subtract 16, move it to the other side. So negative square root of 3x plus 1 is equal to 4. What would we do next? Divide by negative 1. Our radical's not isolated yet, so we have to divide. So I have the square root of 3x plus 1 is equal to negative 4. What do I do next? Square both sides. So to get rid of the square root, we want to square both sides. So the squared cancels out with the square root. So I'm just left with everything that's underneath. 3x plus 1 is equal to what's negative 4 squared? 16. What do we do next? Subtract the 1. So 3x is equal to 15. And lastly, divide by 3. So x is equal to 5. What do I have to do next? Check the answer. So we're going to take 5 and plug it into the x. So I have 16 minus the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 20. So 16 minus 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 would be 16. What's the square root of 16? 4. four. And what's 16 minus 4? 12. 12. Does 12 equal 20? No. no. So what do you think our answer here is? No solution. No solution. Or on WebAssign, it says you have to type in no real solution, but no solution would work fine. No real solution. So here, our only answer did not work. So our answer was no real solution. All right, next. When we have two radicals in an equation, our goal is to get the radical equals the other radical because we can't combine them together. So we can't isolate our radical because we have two of them. So we want it to be one radical equals the other radical. Because if you get a radical equals a radical, you can square both sides which cancels out with the square root. So we just set everything under our radicals equal to each other. So 5x minus 1 is equal to negative 3x plus 7. What would we do next to solve? Um, the... I'm going to add 3 to both sides and add 1. We want our x's on one side, the numbers on the other. Since I don't have an x squared and an x here, I don't have to factor. I'm just going to solve. So we get 8x is equal to 8. Lastly, we divide by 8. So what does x equal? 1. One. What do I have to do next? 
plug it in to check our answer. So I have the square root of 5 times 1 minus 1 is equal to the square root of negative 3 times 1 plus 7. 5 times 1 would be 5 minus 1 is 4. And what's the square root of 4? 2. Three negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3 plus 7 would be 4. And what's the square root of 4? 2. Does 2 equal 2? Yeah. Yep. So our answer works x is equal to 1. On the next page, we're going to skip number 3. We can't just cancel out our radicals because we have that plus 3 there, that, which is not under the radical. I did that question in the last class, and it took up like the whole page of work. But you won't have a question like that on WebAssign or the test or quiz. So you can just skip it. Let's take a look at number five. So we want to isolate our radical. What should I do first? Subtract three. So negative square root of x minus three is equal to x minus three. What do we do next? Divide by negative 1. So it flips the sign of everything. So we get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus 3. What do I do next? Square both sides. Now that our radical is isolated, we want to square both sides. So it cancels out with the square root. So we're left with x minus 3 on the left. How do I square the right side? Foil. foil. We write it twice and foil it out. So let's foil. Negative x times negative x is x squared. Negative x times 3 would be negative 3x. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. And 3 times 3 is 9. So when we combine our like terms here, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. What should we do next? Move everything, the same side. Move everything to the same side. Since we have an x squared and an x, we know that we have to factor here. So let's subtract x and add 3. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 12. I'm going to write this up at the top here so we have more room. Oh, my God, don't say it. Do, you have to do, do we have to do quadratic? Does it factor? Oh, wait, no. No. What are two factors of 12 that add to negative 7? Negative 4 and negative negative 4 and negative 3. Can, Can you wait until we're done? Yeah. So <coughs> x minus 4 and x minus 3. Mm. Equal them both to 0. So x minus 4 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 3. What should we do next? Plug them in to check. So let's start by plugging in 4. So we're going to plug in 4. We get 3 minus the square root of 4 minus 3 is equal to 4. So 3 minus the square root of 1 is equal to 4. What's the square root of 1? 1. And 3 minus 1 is? 2. two. Does 2 equal 4? No. So does x equal 4? No. Nope. Not a solution. It's an extraneous solution. Now let's plug in 3. Let's try x equals th 3. So we get 3 minus the square root of 3 minus 3 is equal to 3. <coughs> So 3 minus the square root of 0 equals 3. What's the square root of 0? 0. 0. And 3 minus 0 is 3. Does 3 equal 3? Yep. So x equals 3. So that works. So 
So our only answer here is x is equal to 3. Any questions here? Okay, a couple other ones that you might see on the WebAssign. Let's say we have something like um, the cube's root of x squared plus 2 is equal to x. How do I get rid of the cubed root? How would I get rid of the cubed root? We cube both sides. Perfect. So, bless you. The cubes root and cubed cancel, so we'd be left with x squared plus 2 is equal to x cubed. Then from here we would solve. One other question that you might see on WebAssign would be x to the fourth power minus x squared minus 30 is equal to zero. What would I do to solve here? <coughs> we would just factor normally, but when we write our factors, Instead of it being just x and x that go into our parentheses, here we're going to put x squared and x squared. So what are two factors of negative 30 that add to negative 1? Negative 6 and 5. So we'd have x squared minus 6 and x squared plus 5. This one we're going to solve all the way. So what would I do next to solve? Divide. Equal them to 0. So x squared minus 6 equals 0. x squared plus 5 equals 0. The first one, we'd add 6 to both sides. x squared is equal to 6. What would I do next to find what x is equal to? Square root. So what does x equal? By square root both sides, what do I need? Plus or minus. So plus or minus square root 6. And we can't simplify the square root of 6, so that would be our answer, two of our answers. We do the same thing with the other one. We subtract 5. So x squared equals negative 5. Take the square root. Can I take the square root of a negative number? No, it would be i, which on this homework, it's only asking for real solutions, so this wouldn't give us a real solution. So our only two answers would be here. So on WebAssign, remember, if it's plus or minus, you have to list them separately. So square root 6 and negative square root 6.